So we are 10 days in <laughs> to 2024, and I have two knit alongs and one crochet along going. I think I have started or restarted four projects already. 2024 needs to take a chill pill and relax a little bit, or I'm going to get burned out before Martin Luther King Day. Anyway, I will see you on the other side. Welcome to episode 36 of Gary Knits, Gary Rides, a craftivism podcast at the intersection of making things and doing good. My name is Gary. I am a knitter and a crocheter, and for the last five years, I have been a cyclist and fundraiser for AIDS Life Cycle, a 545-mile, seven-day bike journey from San Francisco to Los Angeles, supporting the life-saving work of the Los Angeles LGBT Center and the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. Happy New Year. How are you? I hope you had a fantastic holiday, got to enjoy some time with friends and family, or alone, if that's how you like to spend your holidays, um, and got a chance to maybe recharge a little bit heading into the new year. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone who sent kind words um, after the last episode uh, with respect to our dog and um, having to put our dog to sleep uh, over the holidays. Uh, it really meant a lot uh, to me to uh, to feel the kind words or to read the kind words and to feel your feelings. So thank you very much. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Gary Knits Gary Rides and on Ravelry as Gary Knits and Rides. On Ravel, we, we also have a group for the knit alongs and crochet alongs that I run. Um, the group is called End Aids K A L slash C A L. So you can push your photos, do some chatting with folks who are working on the projects there as well. We're going to talk about the knit alongs and the crochet alongs here in a, in a bit. Um, how is everyone? I already said that, but how are you? Uh, it's been a, a busy couple of weeks, as usual, around here. Um, the weather's been pretty good, so I've been able to do some bike riding, which has been fantastic. Um, we had a pretty low-key New Year's Eve itself. Our neighbors across the street invited us over. We all sort of celebrated at uh, the New York ball drop, which made it nice because it was <laughs> nice and early, um, and we got out of there relatively uh, early um, and I think we're in home and in bed by, you know, 1030 or so. So, uh, very low key in that regard. Um, but it has been busy. As I mentioned, the, uh, end aids, knit alongs and crochet alongs kicked off on the first, the knit along that we are running as part of the knit stars pro am design competition kicked off on the third. So we're going to talk about all of that and I can show you where, um, where I am in all of those, uh, those projects. And we had our first knit night for the Pro-Am competition, which is a ton of fun. Um, and we are gearing up for the first D-Stash auction of, of the new year. So um, got a little bit of everything this week. I have whips. I have an FO. I have a, I don't know what happened. What do you call it when you restart a project? You've frogged it and had to restart it. So I have one of those as well as a few little acquisitions and a gift um, to, to get through as well as some uh, some craftivism ideas. So let's we're going to cha change things up with the new year and just see how this goes. Since I typically talk about my events, the knit alongs and crochet alongs and stuff up front, I thought I would just put all the craftivism stuff up at the front and then we will get into the nitty gritty as it were. Um, so on in terms of my events, as I mentioned, the End Aids Winter 24 Knit Along and Crochet Along kicked off on Jul uh, July, mm -hmm. January 1st. Uh, it will run through the end of February. So we have two projects. On the knitting side, we are working on the Bascule Hat and Mitt Set by MK Nance Makes. Um, here is a photo. It is two-color color work, fingering weight yarn. 
The yarn kits were put together by Sarah at Sea Change Fiber. Those are no longer available, although I would go to her website if you really want to uh, get her yarn, which is absolutely beautiful, um, to see what she has available. Uh, we're using the Monterra Sock Base, which is a Corydale nylon blend. Really great for working on color work. I'll show you mine here in a minute. Um, but as with all my... Uh, Knit alongs and crochet alongs, jump into your stash. If you want to join us, it is definitely not too late. Um, we have well over six weeks left to go in this thing, and I think that both of these projects are working out pretty quickly for folks. So that is it on the on the knit side, the Bascule by MK Nance Makes. On the crochet side, we are making the Dahlias and Honey Shawl by Corinne, uh, who is I Knit You Not on Instagram. Uh, yarn kits were put together by Courtney at Apothecary Fiber Co. in two colorways. Um, I am doing mine in a different yarn. I used, uh, I used the Apothecary Fiber Co. yarn as a giveaway. Um, and I also have a version of the shawl in one of those colors that uh, my friend Len made for me, so that was very sweet. Um, and that is going well-ish. <laughs> for me, we'll talk about it. Um, but it, interestingly enough, um, for the first time, I think maybe ever, at least in terms of photos being posted and to get entered into the to the giveaways, the crocheters are taking the lead uh, this time. So the, I, I've seen more photos of the Honeys and Dahlia shawls in progress than I have seen of uh, the Bascule. So that's, um, that's very interesting. Usually the knit alongs are much larger. I don't know that one week in is a great uh, a great sample, but so far we are seeing more of the um, crochet patterns out there in a lot lot of different yarns. So it's really been cool to to see all the different choices that um, that people have made. So as I mentioned, we're a week in, which means we have our first giveaway of the knit along crochet along. Um, I have a goodie pack, which you know what? One second, I'm gonna grab them, and I'm back from getting something off the shelf. So I have, for the first, for the cast on winners, I have these little goodie bags, which have a bunch of different stuff in there. There is a cute little yarn chicken pin that I got at Flock Fiber Festival. There's a little um, Tufts hand balm. Um, bar of soap called Love Wins from one of my favorite new finds of last year, the Optimistic Soap Company. And I'm not going to pull these out, but some little stitch stoppers. One of Jean Ann's stickers from Cerulean Orchid, as well as these skein savers, which are kind of a different version of the yarn cozies. Um, and these are made by The Hook and Nook. Um, so these little fuzzy pom-poms. So a little bit of everything, just some fun little things um, for the first round winners. So the next giveaways for the Knit Along and the Crochet Along will be at halftime. So end of this month. And for those uh, winners, I have, uh, for the knitting, I have a signed copy of Nancy Bates' Knitting California. So if you are a color work lover, which is probably a good guess since you're knitting a color work hat for the knit along, um, there's some really pretty patterns in here. If you have her uh, Knitting the National Parks hat you, uh, book, you know what that's all about. And then, which I also got at, um, at SoCal Fiber Fair when I met her. Uh, and then from uh, Dragonfish Handmade Goods, this sunflower uh, project bag and has some little, uh, for these are the crocheters, some progress keepers, little um, sunflowers as well. So those will be for the halftime prizes. Uh, in terms of the winners for the kickoff cast on prize winners, on the knitting side, um, the winner is Angel Gable. These are their Instagram handles, which is where I drew the prizes from, that and Ravelry. Uh, but I think both of these came from uh, from Instagram. And then on the crochet side is Valerie Voigt. So congratulations to the both of you. Um, I think I have information for, for both of you, so I will get those in the mail to you. And thank you for uh, kicking off this knit-along crochet-along in, uh, 
in a great way. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of photos uh, already up there, especially on the crochet side. So I'm really excited to uh, to see uh, to see those. Um, as I mentioned, we are I'm also <laughs> working on a uh, another knit along, which is tied to the Knit Stars. Uh, Pro Am Design Competition, which uh, was running through in in December, and we launched the pattern packs. Um, trying to think when that was, probably it was before the holidays, so um, before Christmas. I can't remember exactly when the um, now we we launched the patterns, but the pattern pack actually came out um, was available on the on the twenty seventh, and it's now and still available. Um, I will put the link to this and to everything I mentioned down below um, on the Loops Love um, website, which is the Knit Stars uh, sort of yarn yarn store, the the Loops um, yarn store. And for twelve dollars, you get Lewis and my patterns as well as Nina and Melinda's patterns. Um, and then if you buy the pattern before the knit along ends. Uh, you are also going to get a code for an upcoming hat pattern, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute as well, that I had designed for to match Lewis and my scarf. So um, all of that for 12 bucks, 100% of that uh, goes directly to my AIDS life cycle fundraising. If you buy the yarn, which is Loops Love, no, Loops Lux Chunky. So it's this um, blue, well, they have it in three colors, or at least they did uh, when we launched. Um, alpaca and silk blend. Um, it was on sale, uh, I think 20% off. I think everything, um, because Shelly is closing down the um, the retail portion of, of Knit Stars in terms of uh, yarn sales, I think everything's on sale for 20% off, um, which put it around 12 bucks a skein, I think. And 20% of all of those yarn sales are also going to donate, be donated to my um, to my AIDS Life Cycle fundraising. So we had our first knit night um, on the 10th, so a week ago. Uh, no, today's the 10th. So on the 3rd, when we kicked off, yes. Uh, a week ago today, um, we had a ton of fun. So the four of us got on. Um, Nina hosted, which was fantastic. And Sunny from Knit Stars was there and sort of you know, had some Q and A. There were a ton of people joined joined the Zoom call. If you buy the pattern, um, the information for the Zoom will be sent out to you, so you can join um, the upcoming knit nights that we're going to do. We're going to have three more. The next one's coming up on the 18th. I want to say it's 7:30. Don't quote me on this. 7:30 Eastern time. Um, cause things about four 30, my time out here. Um, and we ran for, I don't know, we went for like an hour, hour and a half and we chatted about the process and kind of our designs where the, you know, inspiration came from them and things like that. And we talked about the yarn, uh, quite a bit and how much we all loved working with, uh, with that yarn. And then we did some demos. So I demoed the smocking stitch, which is, um, this part of our pattern here and Nina um, demoed her garter tab that she uses to start uh, her shawl and a really cool technique which I had not seen before of, of doing a provisional cast on um, for the first three stitches of, of, of the garter tab so that you don't have to pick those up when you um, turn your garter tab and start working the other way uh, but she did it on a barber cord um, rather than on a piece of waist yarn, and it made it really easy to to you know pop the the those those stitches on the on the needle. So I thought that was a really cool little uh, tip and trick. Um, so I, like I said, we're going to do it again on the 18th. If you buy the pattern, you'll get access to that. As part of the Zoom call the other night, Sunny from Knit Stars revealed that in up until the third. So I think that was you know, maybe three weeks of pattern sales and yarn sales, we had already raised $5,000 for my AIDS life cycle fundraising, which was amazing and blew my mind because, you know, just as a context, I raised $51,000 last year for AIDS life cycle. Uh, it was my biggest year by far, uh, which I 100% credit to D Stash for Good and to the knit alongs and crochet alongs. Um, to hit my $200,000 fundraising goal, which is <laughs> going to happen this year, it's going to happen, um, 
which will allow me to stop doing this ride, um, I need to raise about 60. So it's really probably 58 if I'm being exact. So there's a $7,000 gap if everything else stayed the same. If I made the same amount of money on the knit alongs and the crochet alongs and on the D stash and on my friends and family, um, there's about a $7,000 delta that I needed to make up somehow. Um, and I have some plans on how that's uh, that's going to happen. This was not part of that. So the fact that we'd already raised in just the first three weeks of what should probably be more like a, a nine week process um, is fantastic because it really gets me a long way towards closing that gap um, and fingers crossed everything else stays the same, then we should be good to go. So there is still plenty of time to join us. These projects are working up very quickly. I, I'll show you where I am on, on um, Nina and Melinda's shawl. But because it's a chunky to Aaron to chunky weight yarn on pretty big needles, um, things are moving pretty quickly. So you plenty of time to to jump in. So if you haven't grabbed the pattern yet and want to participate, and 100% of that goes to to AIDS Life Cycle fundraising, um, definitely click on the link down below, share it with your friends and family. Um, you get some two. I, I mean two two and a half, I would say, since our scarf has two versions, um, really great patterns, and it goes to a great, great cause. So thank you to everyone who has already um, purchased the pattern. And the more we can spread the word, um, the more comfortable I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to definitely hit that, uh, hit that goal for, uh, uh, for the year. So knit night again on the on the 18th, grab the pattern, all the details for the zoom are, um, are in the in the pattern. The other thing on my end, um, we've got going on is the D stash for good yarn auction coming up. Submissions are going to open today as you're watching this. So hopefully, my exhortations to be photographing your yarn ahead of time and getting ready for the submissions to be open. Um, uh, got some traction with everyone and you're ready to go. I'm only going to keep the submissions open for five days. The reason being that I have a ton of yarn, um, which I can talk about in just a second that, um, is going to be listed. And, um, you know, I, I, I think in five days of, of keeping it open, we're going to hit the, the max that I can, that I can possibly, um, manage for, for each of these auctions. So, Get your photographs over the weekend if you haven't done it already and get those uh, get those forms submitted to me. If you have any questions about that, um, shoot me a comment here, DM me on Instagram, email me at garynitscarryrides at gmail.com, and I will walk you through the, the process. It's very easy. You fill out a form for each of your listings, take a photo, and attach that. Um, it's all part of the, the form process. And I do the rest basically until the very end. And then you have to sort things out with your, your, uh, sellers. Um, so hopefully this is going to be the biggest one that we've, we've ever done. Um, as I mentioned, I have a ton of yarn. I ran a little experiment. You may have seen a post on Instagram that was up for on my stories for like a day where I sought, um, dyers out, indie dyers to see if I could help them offload some excess inventory and they could help me sort of create inventory for um, the next couple of D stash for good auctions. Um, it was part. It was an experiment to see if there's something more there, which later this year I can I can um, talk about and, and uh, discuss that. But um, got a handful. I would say probably six or seven dyers. Uh, they let me know what you know what they had and. Um, so I took all that, uh, took the, took all of that yarn in and I've been cataloging it and photographing it and sorting it out. And so, um, there's a ton, <laughs> there is a ton of, of yarn right now in, in the, in the house. And it is some really, really, um, beautiful yarn, a range of weights, um, a range of sort of regular colorways, show colorways that, you know, the show's over and they wanted to get rid of, uh, a lot of, one of a kinds and sort of dye experiments and things like that. So it's a really nice mix of, um, of yarns from some really amazing dyers. So I feel very lucky to, to have, um, the quality of inventory that we're going to have for this, uh, for this next D stash. But I think we're probably going to get close to having 400 items. I would guess that I've done all of the 
lace and sport and worsted and bulky. And I would say we're probably getting close to already 200, 200 listings. Um, and I haven't even touched fingering and DK, which are always the biggest, the two things. And I ha definitely have the most. I have two of the biggest size of space sacks that you can fill um, full of fingering yarn for just for this D stash. And then there are three or four more bins of things um, uh, set aside for future things. So it's going to be big. Um, I think it's going to be um, really good quality. So that auction is going to kick off on the 27th and run through the 6th of February. So things are getting a little tighter in terms of time frames. I don't know if there's a huge amount of value in sort of keeping these things open for longer because what I have seen over the year plus now that I've been doing this is there's a huge bunch of activity in the very beginning when the thing launches and then everyone kind of waits to the end to see jockeying for position and then there's a big burst of activity. So I'm shrinking the time frame up a little bit just so I can actually do more auctions this year. Um, again, to try to raise a little bit money, more money to help me get to this, uh, to get this goal. So Submit starting this Friday. Auction begins on uh, on the twenty second, or twenty second, twenty seventh, um, and all the details are down below. Two other craftivism things that came across my feed this week that I wanted to to point out to you. First is a new hat pattern. Here's a oops, this side. Here's a picture of it. Um, this is from the dynamic duo of. Gabs and Che. They are slip.slip.sis on Instagram. They are sisters. One of them uh, lives nearby me, which is really cool. And they are designers and incredibly prolific knitters. Um, and they have designed uh, a new hat. It's called the Cecilia hat. Um, it is inspired by their grandmother. Um, I should have gotten the details on it in terms of the weight and all that but they don't have it. It'll be down below. And the cool thing about this, it's a beautiful hat. Kind of the cabling that's in there kind of reminds me a little bit about of the uh, Prosperity ribs that's in the, the, make the Make the Turn scarf. Um, it kind of has that roundabout vibe to it. But 100% of the proceeds of the pattern sales are going to go to Room to Read, which is an organization that su supports um, girls education in the developing world. And so they are honoring their, their grandmother, who is a big proponent of education for girls by making this hat and donating uh, the proceeds. So that is very cool. So if you're a hat knitter, um, and you want a new pattern to maybe knit some hats for knit the rainbow or some other hat charity, this would be a great place to start. The other thing that just came across my, um, screen today is an upcoming make along that is being run by Dr. Charlie Untangled. That's her Instagram uh, handled. And it is for Black History Month. It is called the Black History Month Craftivism Mal make along. Um, so it was right up my alley, Craftivism, Black History Month. I love that. Um, it is going to run from the 4th of February through the 16th of March. She is spotlighting uh, some black dyers and some black designers as well as project make, uh, project bag makers, notions makers. Um, there is a prize element to it in terms of buying patterns from uh, black designers and using um, black indie dyers yarn. Um, that get you entries into the into the pricing. She's actually doing a YouTube live today, as I'm filming this on the 10th. So hopefully she will save it because I'd really like to watch it. And it's going to have all of the details. And hopefully she'll talk about who all the the featured designers are. I know just because it, I've seen their posts that uh, Fatima from Dis uh, Disturbing the Fleece is going to be one of the featured designers, and uh, Chin Matthews of uh, Chin Two Together. Uh, is also going to be one of the the designers. So I'm very excited for that. I have a lot of projects going on, as you're going to see here in a minute. Uh, but it is definitely one that I'm going to uh, to to try to get some yarn for and find a pattern for and and cast uh, cast something on. Um, maybe a, a hat for for uh, knit the rainbow or for someone else that uh, that I can work on uh, quickly in between my other things or travel uh, travel work. So. That should be fun. Black History Month Craftivism Mal, and I think it's B H M Craftivism Mal is the um, uh, is the hashtag. So again, all the details for that will be uh, will be linked down below. 
So that is it for events and what's been going on and craftivism. I'm a little confused because I'm going out of my uh, <laughs> out of my normal order um, uh, this week. But let's talk about some knitting and crocheting. Uh, I do have one FO. You may have seen this if you follow along on Instagram. It just about made it by the end of the year. Uh, which would have made it my third pair of socks for the year. But I did finish the Embracing Our Nature socks um, by Samba Knits. Um, these were the part of the uh, fall kickoff uh, knit along uh, for this season of A's Life Cycle Fundraising. Um, Beatrice uh, designed these for me and did a kit with Caitlin of Porter, Porter Woolco, um, which was kind of this like emeraldy green, um, sorry, scrape the mic, uh, there, but since I was trying to work from stash, I took my, uh, yarn from the kit and put that into the, the giveaway pile and I used Caitlin's, um, Petal Party Remix, um, which I'd had for a while, which I think I got it when she was here in town. I'm going to pull this off the blocker just so you can see because the cables run along the front of the foot, um, there they are, uh, they're kind of hard to see on, on the blockers. I loved this pattern. Um, I was a little scared at first because I had never done a, a toe up, um, sock. I did this on us ones. I did it two at a time on two, um, small circular needles and I don't know that I hated, I didn't hate that process with the two um, needles. I think it's a little fussier than doing two at a time on Magic Loop. So I think I'm going to go back to that as I move ahead in my sock, um, sock journey. But these cables were super fun. And um, the, I think I mentioned this last time, this heel of the, you know, four or five pairs of socks that I've ever done. This heel turned out the best. Um, and so I'm, uh, I think I'm going to start another pair of socks here in a bit. Oh, no, no, no. I actually have a pair of socks that started a bit ago and I'm going to continue working on those. And they are actually, I already started those toe up. They're the always be kind of spring mystery set of socks. So that gives you a sense of how old, <laughs> how long ago they got started. Um, but I've only, I haven't even finished the, the toe increases. So it also gives you a hand of how quickly I stopped. Um, but I'm going to just do those as a plain, uh, plain vanilla, uh, sock. They are already on magic loop. So that makes that easy. Um, and I'm going to try this heel again and see if I can duplicate how well it, uh, turned out if it was just pure beginner's luck. Um, but very, very happy with, with how these, these, um, these turned out. I love the colorway of this, um, of this yarn. And I think, uh, the little pops of color really look great with the, with this, with this cable pattern. So, um, highly recommend if you are a sock knitter and did not uh, participate in that uh, that knit along. Um, I think this is a really fun pattern. I will say the only thing I didn't love, and I um, didn't realize it until the end, is you work the front the pattern. You know, I remember I went through this whole thing about how much yarn do I need to hold on to to do the the ribbing at the end, um, and then you don't actually do ribbing uh, around. You only do the ribbing on the the sort of side in the back. Um, and I'm not sure, um, someone in my, in our, our weekly zoom group had done these and said she didn't like how the, the, the last row, the bind off looked, uh, with the cable. So what I did, um, to try to make that a little neater was I finished the last repeat of the, of the cable. And then I did one row of one by one ribbing, which is what was going on. Um, and the rest of the row to set up so that I could do a tubular bind off. So I'm not sure that how it's kind of hard. It's not focusing here, but, um, 
how much tidier that made it than just doing um, a regular bind off there. But it looks it looks pretty good. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm just not, you know, I like the fact that you get that, that cable all the way up, but I'm not sure if not if just cutting it off and just doing, you know, two inches of ribbing would have been um, would have been a better uh, a better outcome. They seem to fit well. Um, I need to you know, run them through now that they've been blocked, which I think my sock blockers, even though they're for my size of foot, they seem to stretch things, stretch them out too much for me. Um, so I may need to go down a size on those and I just need to run these through the washer and get them to tighten up a little bit, but they, they fit well. Um, very happy 64 stitches. I know cable pulls in to a certain degree. So, um, every yarn is going to be, every pattern is going to be a little bit different, but I'm, I'm going to do, this plain vanilla sock at 64 stitches on a US one and see if I get a sock that in a plain vanilla sock uh, works for me because those fit pretty well. So very excited for, for that first FO of the year it was supposed to be an FO for last year, but you know, it is what it is. Um, in terms of whips, before we get to the new ones, I actually have made a fair amount of progress on my other thing that was supposed to be a FO for 2023, which is my Stephen West mystery knit along is living in my crafty little Fox bag, which matches the color of the shawl, uh, that I got at flock in uh, Seattle this year. Um, so this is the geo gradient MCAL. Um, let me pull this shade down. Um, I am using a kit that was actually <laughs> purchased for the Shallography uh, MCAL that I ended up not using. It is Yak uh, Merino from Undercover Otter. Um, I used four of the colors. There's a fifth color that I um, did not use. So I will use that for something else. Um, but in these sort of like greens and then this sort of green gray uh, as one, uh, one of the colors. So I am now completely through with clue three, there's one of them. And here's the other wing. I have a few ends to weave in on this one. I just finished it, uh, finished it up last night. And this, the first wing of this seemed like it took forever. Now I wasn't working on it uh, diligently because I was in the middle of trying to design the scarf for uh, knit stars and doing lots of swatching and all that stuff. Um, so I didn't work on it as diligently as um, I might otherwise have. So when I started the third, uh, the, the second half of it, uh, this one went much quicker. I think also, you know, it's basically this exact mirror image of it. So the process uh, was more familiar and I made fewer mistakes and had to tink back less, although not zero. Um, I love the look of this section. So what you, if you, I don't know, it may be hard to see, but um, I alternated between just the one strand of the undercover otter and then every other repeat I um, added mohair to each of the each of the colors, which is what I had done um, here as you know on the on the other sections as well. And I talked about that instead of doing a, a color pop, that's what I decided to do. Um, I love the look of this. It makes a much denser fabric than the other sections and I think the looking at the um, the border, which is the the last clue, uh, I think that's also going to be a little denser. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out in terms of you know wearing it and how it kind of drapes because this section has a lot less drape to it than this section. So um, I don't remember that in my others. No, the other ones are all pretty, pretty similar. You don't have the same, um, because you're using so many slip stitches here. It just creates a, a, a dense, it'd be very warm if you, if you made this as like a cowl or something. Um, but I'm just not sure how it's going to work from, um, you know, a drapeability. You can kind of see there, it just, it's a little stiffer. Anyway, uh, I'm loving the colors. Um, I'm enjoying the pattern so far. I did not go ahead um, last night and start clue four. I watched the, it's a dip stitch, uh, dip stitch pattern. Um, I think I need to like find an evening when I can kind of just sit because it's basically picking up around the whole bottom edge here. 
I think you end up with something like 495 stitches. Um, so that I feel like I need to do that all in one fell swoop so that I'm not losing count because it kind of goes by, you know, pick up X number in this section and then X number in this section. And I feel like um, if I don't do it in all in one sitting, I'm going to end up with the, the wrong number of, of, of stitches. But um, I really want to get this finished. One, because it's been since October and... Um, I just want to get it. I just want to get it finished. Um, I have a lot of yarn. I have like f at least 40 grams left of everything. So um, I'll probably go for the bigger size, even though that means more work and working on it longer. But I want to finish it because I don't need another project. But Jake at Ken Yarn um, just last week came out with this really cute crochet granny cluster stitch shawl. Uh, a DK weight, so I think it'll work up really quickly. And of course, yesterday when I should have been photographing yarn for D-Stash or working on one of my myriad projects, I went through my DK yarn and picked out five skeins of yarn to to cast on that, whatever you call starting crochet. Start that um, as soon as I'm finished with this, because I think that'll be a great TV project. I mean, I haven't looked at the pattern, but I think it's pretty good potato chippy kind of uh, um, projects and I'm knitting it out of stash so I'm getting rid of some stash so I want to get this finished so I can start something new um, so that is the uh, that is my MCAL the other things that I've, uh, I'm i working on are all knit along and crochet along I mean I guess <laughs> I guess technically that also was a, uh, a, a knit along uh, most of the world has finished it I'm just still working on it the rest of the projects I'm working on are knit alongs and crochet alongs that I'm either running or a um, uh, co-runner of. Uh, let's start with, um, since it's sitting right here in my bearded pearl Harris tweed bag, let's start with the crochet along. This is the honey uh, Dahlias and Honey Shawl um, from I Knit You Not, uh, Corinne Purfoy uh, on Instagram. I am making it in this merino silk yarn, which was one of um, Adela's black label yarns for uh, Lola Bean Yarn Co. This, her black label is always music inspired, and this is called, because I always get it wrong, uh, Prince in the Revolution, The Beautiful Ones. I always say The Chosen Ones or The Beautiful One, The Beautiful Ones. So, um, here is where I'm through the first repeat um, of one part of it. So there's, I think there's like this bobbly section and then there's like a, a, a lacier section. So I'm through with the first full repeat of the bobbly section. So there's um, these stitches, the bobbles that uh, Corinne calls bead stitch, really fun to make. Um, you know, I, I posted this on Instagram and I said it a little earlier. I struggle um, with crochet. I'm very slow. Um, I feel like I do every row twice um, because if I do not stop and count stitches every single row, invariably within two rows, um, my stitch counts off. And um, it's... I know it's one of those things that I just need to crochet more. Um, the, 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 this is certainly, this is not a issue with, with this pattern or any of the other patterns that, uh, that I, that I've worked on. This is a me issue. Um, and it's just that I, because I'm less skilled at it, it's slower for me. Um, I always gravitate toward like picking up a knitting project because, um, I know I can, do that in the car. I can do that watching TV. This I cannot. I cannot do it watching TV. I have to sit and focus um, or things get cattywampus pretty quickly. Um, but I am having fun with this. Um, I am um, enjoying the, the shimmer of this yarn. It's hard to see on, on the film, the camera, but the silk really adds a, a very nice sheen to this. I think once I block it and kind of get the stitches... Um, more evenly uh, defined is going to look really nice. You know, one of the problems, I think, not problems, one of the um, aspects of a singles yarn 
and I don't think it has to do necessarily with the silk content. I think it's just more that it's not a um, applied applied yarn. I find the stitch definition um, not as crisp as what I'm seeing from 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 some other people. Part of that again is me. My tension is all over the place. The sti my stitches are just not uh, as even as they they are in my knit fabric. And again, that I think comes down to just not doing it as much. So um, you know, looking ahead. Another kind of reason I would like to do Jake's Jake's pattern um, is because it's just um, good practice, and it's just good practice to just be crocheting and working on um, consistency and things like that. So I'm enjoying this. Uh, hopefully, I'll you know I, I imagine this will be the um, the slower of my of my my two projects, um, but I'm hoping that you know each week I can try to. Um, get through another uh, another pattern repeat when I have a couple hours to sit down and just uh, focus exclusively on that. But um, really pretty, and you should go check out the um, uh, the hashtag, which I'll put up here, which is how you enter into the prizes. So this is um, hashtag uh, end aids C A L winter twenty four, and just see all the projects that people are working on. There's some really really beautiful ones. So uh, sticking with the uh, end aids uh, knit alongs. I have my bascule, which I am working on. I am using uh, the yarn kit yarn. So this is um, the yarn from Sarah at Sea Change Fiber. Uh, so I opted for the same colors that uh, uh, Nance did her sample in. So this is Au Naturel here and Stormy Seas here. Uh, this yarn is fantastic to work with and I'm having so much fun with this project. I panicked a little bit when I first started it, when I brought up the chart. Um, also first time I'm using knit companion, which has been really, really good. Like I really, I mean, I, I don't love having to have my tablet like constantly on, um, and with me. And so I don't know if it's that much better than, uh, checking off little boxes on a, on a piece of paper, but it's working really well. And I'm, I'm hoping to explore that a little bit further, but I panicked a little bit. Here it is. Um, when I brought up the pattern because it is a, I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> sure. Um, it is a z zero repeat vertically pattern. So obviously there are repeats in the round that you're doing. Um, I think you do eight repeats. You can see all my little stitch markers there. Um, you do eight, but there, each row is unique from zero to, I think it's like 69 rows in the, in the, I'm doing the original hat pr p pattern. So it's more of a Tam. Um, and my only other, you know, experience with, with color work was, you know, it was a 12 or a repeat. And then you kind of was like, okay, this is Row number two, I remember that I have to do, you know, three of one color, three of another, two, two, one, one, whatever. Um, but I looked at this and there were no repeats in that. Every row was unique. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard. Um, you know, there, I'm just going to, it's going to be starting a new every, you know, every single row. Um, but for whatever reason, the way that the pattern is, um, that has not been a problem. Literally, I do the first repeat, get the pattern down, and I almost never have to look back at the um, back at the chart. It's just it's sort of intuitive. I mean, you can kind of see that um, you're you know you're doing these sort of peaks and valleys, but um, maybe because the Ditch repeats between the things are relatively short and they're mirrored. So you do, I can't remember, it's 25 stitches, I think. So you do like 12, then the center stitch, and then 12 more. So you're just repeating, you know, you're just mirroring what you'd already done. So maybe that's what's what's helping. Um, but that initial fear of like, oh, this is going to be impossible, not impossible, but this is going to be a real challenge because I'm not going to be able to, you know, sort of remember back that a, you know, row number one is XXXXXXX. Um, so this has been going uh, really well, really enjoying it. The other thing, which I think I mentioned before, Sarah at Sea Change Fiber gifted me 
this Norwegian knitting thimble um, because I had said on my first uh, color work projects, uh, I was struggling with the tension a little bit, specifically um, the tension being too tight when um, when I was in the color work section. Um, that was true on the, the hat that I made for SoCal Fiber Fest. And so when I saw her at SoCal Fiber Fest, she said, let me give you this. She's like, it was a game changer for me um, and really helped keep the tension loose. It's great. I It's um, it's taken a little bit of, of, of time to, to sort of get used to untangling. You know, it does make sort of stopping and starting, like if, oh, the phone rings or time to go feed the dog or whatever, taking, you know, figures, taking it off and then getting it all set up a little again takes a little bit of time. But she was absolutely right. I can tell, um, you know, we'll see at the end of the day, but relative to that other hat and relative to the Palm Springs cow, I can already tell that this color work is much more relaxed than um, uh, than the other one was. And it's a little, it's like I said, it took, took a little bit of time to to get used to it because what it feels like when I'm doing it is it's overly loose. Like it feels like it's just barely, you know, holding on um, because, you know, it's, you're holding your yarn, or at least I am just kind of up against the fabric. Um, and so it just feels very loose relative to my regular knitting relative to when I was doing the, 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 um, the two colors and two different fingers. Um, but I couldn't be happier with, um, with how this is turning out. So, uh, like I'm about a third of the way through, I think, uh, or no, maybe, maybe about a quarter of the way through. Um, so I think this is going to finish up pretty quickly. And interestingly enough, like I said, because once I've kind of done the first 12 stitches, I've got that row down. Um, I've been able to watch TV and listen to audiobooks and do things while I'm doing this, which is not something that I was expecting to happen with uh, my third now stranded color work uh, project. So um, if you're looking for um, a fun stranded color work project, I would uh, add this to your list. If you have struggled with tension, um, in the past, I mean, I think these are probably like three or four bucks. Um, this one was just, I, I can't remember the brand, but it was a, a pretty, you know, it's pretty basic one. I've seen, I've seen some really, I, I, someone posted the other day, you know, one that looked like it was made by like a jewelry maker. You know, it was like sterling silver and um, really, really almost like jewelry. Uh, but this has been really fantastic. So if, if you've not tried one, I, I would check it out um, and see if it uh, see if it works for you. Now I don't know. Someone can ch chime in down below. Um, I don't know what you do <laughs> when you move beyond two colors. I don't know. They have have them that have like you know twelve different uh, not twelve but like three different three different rings. Or um, if you maybe then do two on one finger and one on the other hand. I don't know what uh, uh, what goes on. We we will explore that when we move into the next phase of my uh, stranded color work. Uh, journey, but really enjoying the the bascule. Um, hopeful that I can finish both the hats uh, and the mitts in uh, in time, and um, I think the mitts will be fun. Um, some some folks I know on our Zoom call have been um, struggling with the mitts in some regard, and I can't remember exactly what it was. Whether it was trying to get them to work without laddering on on Magic Loop or 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 something like that, but. Um, I will cross that bridge when I come to it. The last thing that I'm working on in terms of a uh, knit along project is for the Knit Stars uh, Pro Am. I have decided to do Nina and Melinda's Candace's Comfort Shawl. This is where I am. Beautiful. I am doing it in the. It, it, this is the um, the Loops Lux Chunky. Uh, alpaca silk, but I'm doing it in the natural color. Um, I am going to give this to my mother when it is finished. I'm also going. The plan is to give the honeys and uh, dahlias and honeys shawl to my mother as well. So maybe it'll be a double Mother's Day, um, double Mother's Day gift. One for spring, one for for winter. Uh, but this is really fun. So what I'm 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 basically using this as my um, knit group knitting. So every uh, 
Thursday, a group of us meet at a local library and um, hang out for a couple of hours to uh, uh, to knit. And this, at least so far, um, even with the cabling, has been a perfect knit group uh, project because it's a lot of stockinette focus for a little bit <laughs> for for a few seconds and then you're you're back to stuck in it and that's only going to grow and grow and grow so um really enjoying it i'm i mean i'm less than half of a uh a ball in my first skein left and so um should make pretty good pr- i think i'm three repeats in on the cable i think there's like 11 or 12 and then you go into some edging uh section so i'm, I'm expecting that that will get completed by the end of the um the, the make along which is running through the the middle of middle of february maybe not because if i'm only working on it for a couple of hours a week at my knit night as it grows i may not be making as much progress as i think i'm going to so that may have to become a tv knitting thing as well so um we shall see uh, i think that is it in terms of oh the only the other thing that uh, that i've worked on and where is it here um, is, and this is what I said, I don't know what to call it when you have to frog something and restart it, but, um, I had on the launch of the patterns for the, the pro-am, um, I had shown a sample of the hat I had made that was to go along with the, make the turn scarf and it incorporated the, the smocking pattern. Um, and I had come up with some crown decreases and then, uh, had finished it up. Of course, I wrote absolutely nothing down. I just said, uh, you know, I got inspired because I was like, oh, I have an extra skein of yarn because Lewis's version of the scarf takes four. Mine only takes three. At, th- at that point, we didn't know that we're, you were just going to be buying um, yarn a la carte. We thought maybe it was going to be kits. And so I was like, well, if they buy the, if they're not sure if they want to make the infinity scarf or the regular scarf, then they decide to make, maybe they're going to have an extra ball of yarn and let me come up with a hat. So I'd done that, but I did not write anything down. And um, it was, I needed to figure it out so I could start writing it down so I could re- release the thing. Um, and for whatever reason, it was, you know, it was around Christmas and it was the time that everything was going on with the dog. And I was just like, I can't sit down and I can't figure out what, I, what I've done here, especially in the crown decreases. And even the more, and the more look, I looked at it, I was just like, I have the basic idea, but... I just want to rip it out and start over to make sure I write everything down. So um, I've got two by two ribbing and probably have another inch or so to go, uh, go in that. And then I will get into the, the smocking part. Um, it, it only took two or three hours to do it all at once. You know, when I decided to do it all at once, this is just um, going to go in the car. I've got Philharmonic on Friday. And so this will be good sitting in Disney Hall and sitting in the car to and from uh, knitting to get back to the crown decreases and then figure out what I'd actually done. So that is the other project that is uh, currently on the needles. As I mentioned, I found this pair of socks that um, I had started back in the spring and finished or stopped, stopped very quickly thereafter. So my plan is maybe once the hat is sorted um, to pick those back up and have those as kind of like car knitting. Cause once I get through the toes, it's just going to be round and round and round for the, um, um, uh, for the rest of it. Cause it's going to be a plain vanilla, vanilla sock. Uh, so that's it all on the, the making side of things in terms of acquisitions, couple of fun ones. Um, first is it was an acquisition, but it was a gift. My uh, nieces were visiting over the holidays and my husband took them down to a nearby town where there's a new bookstore, uh, new and used, I think. But in the used section, uh, one of my nieces found this, which is the complete book of progressive knitting. Now, it is not progressive knitting in the you know progressive versus reactionary uh, knitting, but it is progressive in, in that it is sort of a, a complete complete sort of knitting course um and this was written the first copyright publishing of this was 1940 so this is sort of pre-elizabeth zimmerman um 
And this one was actually from the fifth printing, which was 1953. And it is so funny. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, there, there's nothing, I don't think, I mean, I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but I mean, this, thank goodness for YouTube, right? Because if you're trying to teach yourself the long tail cast on using these sort of fuzzy photos, um, but they go through, you know, all sorts of like calculations and things on making, uh, making different garments. Um, so I'm going to, I want to sit down and spend a little time on this and, you know, maybe at some point it would be fun. I mean, I've thought about it from time to time once all of the fundraising and bike riding is done is like going through one of Elizabeth Zimmerman's books, the like knitting almanac where she does one project a month and, and, uh, and trying all that out. And so this might be a fun one as well, just to pick a, a sweater out of here and, and see what, uh, if I can make it work <laughs> using these, uh, using these instructions. Uh, but I thought it was really cute. It was really, um, and it's in great shape for a book from 1953. Anyway, um, so that was fun. The other uh, acquisitions, I got um, my Magpie Fiber Society box this last week. In the dig, It was DK weight. It was their swanky DK base. It was um, a beautiful sort of very pale blue, white, lavender. Um, I think it was the variegated I think I got instead of the speckles. I can't show it to you because when I was digging through the DK weight yarn to find my um, skeins for the coming up um, crochet project from uh, from Jake at Kent Yarn, I put it into the DK bin and it is now in there until I uh, dig it out again. So I sorry I can't show it to you, but it's beautiful yarn. Um, the other thing is uh, Lisa from um, For You, which is a yarn shop in Oberlin, Ohio. And she is a lovely human being that I got to meet at um, at the Magpie store, actually, was the first place I met her, um, at uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool this last year. Uh, but she was doing sort of a year-end sale. And so I decided to put myself in the hole right away in terms of my intention of ending the year with less yarn than I started because one of the things she was clearing out, I don't know if it's, she's not going to be carrying it or if it was just, you know, tidying up inventory was spin cycle. And it was, I think 30% off. And so I grabbed some fun colors of, um, spin cycle. So, uh, let's see. This one is the family jewels. Truth Bomb, Straw Flower, and Holy Toledo. So I think they actually kind of, I mean, you never, I, problem with ordering Spin Cycle online is you don't know which skeins you're going to get, and they can be highly variable in their, their skeins. But I think these are actually kind of fun together. Um, uh, some uh, some of them I have a couple of, uh, of them. So I need to look through, and, and um, I've only ever used Spin Cycle once. And I know that Andrew Mowry does a bunch of it with like her shifts and shifties and night shifts. And um, I'm just not sure what the quantities you need are to, to do that. But um, that would be fun sometime down the road once other things are finished. But 30% off, I'm like, I can't. <laughs> it's hard. I, I can. I just, it's just hard to, to pass, up a, pass up a good bargain. Uh, so that is it in terms of acquisitions. Um, no heart mail this week in terms of things coming in for for giveaways. Um, and I don't know that I have any other things coming. Mm, no, I think Max and Vincent from Les Garçon did a collab with Michelle from Woolens and Nosh again. Do I need more self-strapping yarn? Probably not. But did I buy some anyway? You betcha. Um, anyway, so I think that, that'll be uh, next time you'll get, to, get a chance to see that. But I think that's it. And I don't foresee myself going to a yarn store anytime soon. Um, so hopefully I can have that be it for the for the month. And um, with some of this de-stash, get some negative things going. Get some negative flow going in terms of the yarn. Anyway, Um Thank you all for spending some time with me in the new year. Uh, I hope you had a fantastic holiday. I hope your new year is getting off to a fantastic start. If you enjoyed this, 
please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Tell a friend. I would love to continue to build this community and grow it and get the word out on as many of these craftivism ideas as I can. To that end, if something comes across your feed that you think would be a cool craftivism idea for me to highlight one week, please let me know in my DMs on Instagram or in a comment here below. I would love to check it out and uh, get the details on it and share it with as many people as we possibly can. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Have a great rest of your week.